Speedrunning sure is an incredible thing. People abuse the slightest overlooked things or minor issues that came with the game and try to optimize the time in order to finish it faster. Today's games usually use a fairly fleshed out engine with several unharming fallback options. However, this wasn't the case a couple of years ago. Redundancy reduction was key. As we have shown a couple of times already, Ocarina of Time is a great example of how far this optimization can go. The game code is so optimized to redundancy reduction that it allows speedrunners to abuse it and write own values to certain areas of the memory. The best example of this is the reverse bottle adventure seen in Ocarina of Time. With this glitch you can write certain items into your inventory that aren't supposed to be there. Now we're trying to make this as simple as possible, so let's just say this. They could have completely solved this and erased this glitch if they just added a couple, possibly empty bytes after the use of the B button. This is what Majora's Mask did in order to prevent this from happening again, as Nintendo was well aware of this effect. They patched the easiest way of performing this trick in later versions of the game, but this can be pushed further in even older games. While Pokemon Yellow is probably the most popular example of what we're talking about, we're actually going to go for a slightly different game. The first Legend of Zelda title on the NES. Older games didn't have a lot of space and had to cram their functions and values in a rather tight space of memory. This is where a certain trick... Well, hold on a second. It's not even a trick. But let's stick with trick just for the sake of it. And it's called... Arbitrary Code Execution. The name of this trick means that we can inject custom code that we wrote ourselves into the game. Arbitrary doesn't imply that the code is random, however. It just means that it's code that wasn't meant to be there. Using this, we can do all sorts of things in games. But what does this have to do with speedrunning? Well, there are ways to write own code into a game without any external devices and without hacking the game. If we use The Legend of Zelda, for example, the procedure will look like this. We grab the sword, grab the flute, get past Woods of Mystery and perform this trick in order to get ourselves to level 9 and finish the game. Well, it should be noted that this only works in the second quest due to the hidden stairs in the graveyard. The reason this works is because we overflow the memory the game has for the actors. As soon as something is meant to spawn, the game will look for an empty spot within the memory from a certain point on and write the sprite reference pointer into the empty slot. Unfortunately, there is no break condition. If these slots are filled, the game will continue to look for empty space within the memory. And even further, the information that points to the functions that are to be executed are really close to the actual sprite information. But what does this mean? As we overload the sprites and attempt to spawn another sprite, the game will look for an empty spot. If we now happen to have one of the sprite instruction pointers to be the same value as if they wouldn't exist at all, the game will overwrite that pointer. So the game will now attempt to use this value as a reference on what to do with a sprite. As a real example for what The Legend of Zelda does, a Po is spawned and has six function sets of what they could do, reaching from 00 to 05. The stair sprite has the reference 5e. Unfortunately, the value for a blank space is also 00. So, if we happen to have a Po with a function instruction being 00, the code will overwrite this with 5e. The game will now look at the Po and say, Alright, you're at animation 5e, I'll run that instruction, and proceeds to count 94 instructions from the first one the Po has. It does this because, well, 5e in hex is the same as 94 in decimal. However, as the Po only has 6 instructions, it reaches code that it's not meant to reach, which in this case is one of the music notes the game plays. The game will now look at the code it reached, which wasn't meant to be executed this way, and interprets it as instructions, because that's what the Poe function was meant for. It looks at the code and happens to find values that it once again interprets as jump to another value, and so it does. If we manage to hit the right value here, we actually manage to jump over another function which would crash if we were to land inside this one and ultimately end up at the file names. In older games, the file names were stored very close to each other, but always just read out by the game and then given the instruction to display certain pixels. 
The instruction that the game was given by the Poe now ends up by the file name and once again tries to use it as instructions. This is where the arbitrary, so non-original code comes in. Using characters of the file names, we can force the game to falsely interpret these characters and actually execute them, as if they were instructions. We can use this to say things like, copy a chunk of the overworld into the inventory, jump into another function, give me rupees, or force the loading screen and then set my entry point to the final dungeon in the game. The function runs the loading screen, writes the according destination and finally finds a breakpoint which puts it to sleep. Using this, the game can be finished in about two minutes. But is this really beating the game? While people are usually torn over the legitimacy of speedruns already, here even the speedrunners themselves can't decide on it. Oh, and one more addition, even though we said only old games would fall prey to this, it's actually not quite true. In fact, it could even work for games like Twilight Princess if there was the possibility to add one more character to the file names. Altogether, this was a very brief explanation to possibly one of the most fascinating things there is in the world of gaming and programming combined. If you want us to make another video on this, then be sure to tell us in the comments section down below. And you know what you could also do is subscribe to the channel and click the bell button and watch more videos. That makes you happy, that makes us happy, that makes the world happy. So be sure to do so and we will see you all next Friday in a new video. Yes, we are here every week, so don't go.